essentially all eclipses are caused by shadows. So the solar eclipse, uh, if you were lucky in you know, August of 2017, maybe you were around Eugene and able to go travel to a part of the state that saw the, the total solar eclipse. Um, I did and it was incredible. And in the case of a solar eclipse, uh, what we're looking at here is the moon passing in front of the disk of the sun in such a way that the entire disk of the sun is blocked and this wispy um, shape that we see around the outside of that disk is the solar corona, which is normally not visible to us. So in the case of a solar eclipse, the shadow of the moon is being cast on the earth. This is in contrast to a lunar eclipse, which is when the shadow of the earth is cast on the moon. So I'll show you the geometries responsible for both of these and also discuss a few different types of each kind of eclipse. So like I said, the solar eclipse is when the moon casts a shadow on the earth. And as seen from the earth, the moon blots out the sun's disk entirely. But the, um, you know, the size of that shadow doesn't cover the entire earth. The, the shadow that's cast is cast in the shape of a cone in such a way that only a small dot of shadow is on the earth's surface. And this draws out some, you know, arc across the surface of the earth as the earth uh, rotates underneath the shadow. And so only observers that are kind of within that strip are going to see the total solar eclipse. What is the phase of the moon immediately before a solar eclipse? So I'm seeing most votes for A, which is what I had in mind. So it, during the new moon, this is when the moon can actually come between the earth and the sun. But some of you said B, waning crescent, which I suppose is fair for sometime before a solar eclipse. Um, but the reason that it's the new moon is that the phase of the moon changes slowly over the course of days. So over the course of a single day, as it causes a solar eclipse, it would be new that whole day. So basically the phase of the moon for like one entire day or night is the same. What would be wrong with this picture? There's actually a couple things. So type your idea in the chat. Don't hit send yet. And I'll tell you when to hit send. I'll give you about a minute. Okay, if you're ready, you can go ahead and send your ideas. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of um, people saying that the moon would be new during the solar eclipse. So that's number one, that the moon can't be full just before a solar eclipse. Um, also, it looks like, you know, if both of these are against a dark background, that suggests that it's at night, but a solar eclipse occurs during the day. Um, and then also the, um, did someone pick it out? Yeah, maybe there's, maybe some of this is also on the wrong scale. So that's another idea that I wanted to drive toward with this. Um, so the idea of a solar eclipse is that the moon blots out the sun completely, right? That the entire disk of the sun is is covered by the disk of the moon. And that occurs only because the earth and moon happen to be the same angular size on the sky. So angular size is another way of, of measuring the width of an object on the sky. Um, because, you know, when we, when we measure position on the sky, we're measuring in terms of angle. So when we measure size on the sky, it's also handy to measure in terms of angle. And just to give you an idea of what angular size means, uh, this purple, angle is, you know, subtended by some, you know, cone that we're centering on the observer here at Earth. 
and let's say that this is the sun, the cone edges are on either side of the sun. So if the sun's linear size, its actual diameter is larger, then it'll take up more of the sky. So a bigger linear size means also a bigger angular size. And then if the sun is farther and farther away from us, then its angular size on the sky looks smaller and smaller from our perspective, right? So those are the two things that are relevant and you can you know, use geometry to do the exact calculation of angular size. We're not gonna worry about that here though. So the moon and sun are just by complete coincidence, the exact same angular size from our perspective here on earth. And this is just a lucky accident. There's no reason it has to be this way. And actually it won't be this way forever. Uh, the moon is slowly getting farther away from us. We'll discuss that a little bit later. Um, but if this wasn't the case, we wouldn't have total solar eclipses. We would only have annular eclipses if the moon was a little closer to us, or we wouldn't get eclipses at all if the moon was a little farther, making it a little bigger in the sky than the sun. Okay, so there's a few different types of solar eclipses, and I'm, you know, kind of leaving something out of this angular size discussion, which is that the moon's orbit around the earth is elliptical, and so sometimes it is closer to the Earth and sometimes it is farther than the Earth. So it's not always the exact same angular size as the sun, but most of the time it is. However, when it's a little bit closer to us, then we see what we call an annular solar eclipse. So this is um, what we see here in image B. The moon is a little bit closer to the Earth than the sun, and so it doesn't completely block out that solar disk. This is in contrast to a total solar eclipse, which is when the moon and sun are the exact same angular size. Um, and then there's another option, which is the partial solar eclipse, where the moon and the sun aren't completely aligned, and the moon kind of skims over one part of the sun as it arcs across the sky and doesn't completely cover the solar wind at any point during that, um, during the, its travel. 